All right, now imagine that uh, we have a container, all right? And inside this container, we have a gas mixture, all right? There's one gas, and then we also have molecules of another gas whoop, in there, all right? So now if we, if we think about this, the uh, the pink gas uh, here it's going to be bouncing around the walls, all right? So it's going to have a certain pressure, right? Depending on how many molecules of uh, of the pink gas there are, okay? And uh, at the same time, the black gas is uh, also bouncing and around and uh, hitting the walls and creating some pressure as well, okay? So remember, it's that force against the walls that's creating pressure. Um, it's the fact that the molecules are m bouncing around all the time. Every time they hit that wall, they're kind of, you know, nudging it out a little bit, keeping it pushed out. Um, otherwise, it would just collapse in on itself, um, kind of like a... Uh, uh, a garbage bag or something. You've, uh, you know, you pull out a garbage bag from the box and it's all stuck to itself because there's no molecules of gas uh, bouncing around in there to push it apart. You have to get some air into it in order to uh, separate it. So anyway, we have this gas mixture and the pressure of that gas mixture, all right, the total pressure is going to be equal to the pressure of the one gas, all right? So I'll say the pressure uh, of the first component plus the pressure due to the second component, all right? And uh, however many components there are, you know, you can uh, continue to add on other pressures. So the, the total pressure within a, a, a container, you know, it, that has multiple types of gases in it, is just the sum of all of the, what we call, partial pressures. Okay? We call it a partial pressure because it's not the total pressure inside that container. It's only the pressure that is uh, due to the presence of the molecules of that type, okay? So P1 is just the pressure due to those black molecules. P2 is just the pressure due to the pink molecules, all right? So uh, we call those partial pressures. So the total pressure is just going to be the sum of all of the partial pressures, all right? Now, let's uh, look at this, and, and we know that pressure um, times volume, you know, the gas law, PV equals nRT, okay? Pressure times the volume. Um, and so if we, uh, if we solve this for P, okay, we divide both sides by V, P equals nRT divided by V. Right? So, I can rewrite each of these partial pressures as nRT over V. Right? So, now my total pressure is equal to my pressure of, uh, my, you know, pressure 1, which would be the moles of my first gas, times R, which is constant, times the temperature, and, and the temperature in this mixture um, is going to be uh, the same. We're not going to have a different temperature for the black uh, molecules and as for the, the pink ones. Uh, and the volume is the same also. They're both in the same container. So we don't have to distinguish those. Just the moles would be different. Right? So what I'll have is N1 RT over V and then I do the same thing for the second molecule, right? Um, N2 RT over V, 
okay? And of course, again, uh, if there were three gases in the mixer, I could do N3 RT over V, add another term for every new uh, gas that's in the mixture, all right? So um, if we simplified this, we could, uh, we could write this as, you know, you have that RT over V, you can kind of pull that out, and you'd have N1 plus N2 times RT over V, okay? And um, <clears throat> now what would, uh, I mean, what we can, can write with this, we can essentially call this the total number of moles, right? You add up all the, the moles from each of the different gases and you have the, um, the total pressure is equal to the total moles times RT over V, okay? Now this uh, quantity, the total number of moles, all right, that um, is used in uh, a, uh, a value called the mole fraction, okay? It's uh, not a capital X, but it's actually uh, the Greek letter uh, chi, um, and we call this the mole fraction. As the name implies, it's just a fraction of the mole. So kind of like a uh, percent, it's just the moles of one substance out of the total number of moles. And the only thing is we don't multiply by 100 to make it a percent. That's why it's called a fraction. It's just a fraction of the part over the whole. Okay, so this would be the mole fraction of that first component. And we could write the same thing for the second component um, as well. Okay, so knowing this um, <clears throat> and seeing this in total there, we can um, take our value up here, we said that uh, P1 equals N1 RT over V. We can take this and we can get this if we take P1 divided by the P total, right? So this is just uh, some uh, mathematical derivation. It's not something that you would have to do. Um, but we're just kind of showing you where some uh, of this stuff comes from and how we can get that. And then from there, we just use the end results. But it's good to, uh, to see where it comes from. If we take this P1 and divide it by the P total, the total pressure um, and the uh, partial pressure of the first component, all right? P1 is N1 RT over V, so that'd be N1 RT over V, and we divide that by P total, which is N total RT over V. All right, so we have this, and now what do you notice happens? Well, the RT over V cancels out. All right, so we have N1 over N total. And what is that? Nothing but the mole fraction. Okay, so the partial pressure of a given substance out of divided by the total pressure is equal to the mole fraction of that substance. All right. Um, okay, so now we uh, we look at that and uh, this will uh, often prove to be useful. Say for example, we want to find what is the partial pressure of a given gas in, uh, in a sample mixture, you know? Um, and so what we're going to do is we, it's easier to measure the total pressure than it is to measure the partial pressure, right? And uh, it's also easier to measure the, the mole fraction because we can know uh, relatively easily how many moles 
of a gas there are, depending on uh, how we introduce that, that mixture, we can find out the mole fraction of, uh, of, of that gas mixture. Okay, And so that would allow us to calculate the partial pressure for a given gas. And that's just going to be the mole fraction times the uh, total pressure. Okay, so the mole fraction of that of that component times the total pressure is equal to the partial pressure for that component. Right. So this is a useful um, equation as well, and it's uh, fairly straightforward uh, conceptually. You know, the partial pressure is equal to the mole fraction times the total pressure. So, um, you know, back to our little drawing here, the partial pressure for the black molecules, all right, is just equal to the mole fraction. In other words, what fraction of the molecules are black ones? And then multiply that by the uh, total pressure in there, um, since uh, since the total pressure is due to the to all of the molecules together and the partial pressure of the black is just due to the black ones we just multiply that total pressure by the mole fraction of uh, of the black molecules and that will give us the partial pressure of those uh, black molecules in in, uh, in this case so to speak okay so for any gas mixture um, this uh, this holds and that gives us a useful relationship there. So what you should uh, remember from this uh, especially um, are, are a few of these uh, equations here. First, this uh, first equation, pretty straightforward, I think. Uh, the total pressure is equal to the sum of all of the partial pressures of all the different gases in the mixture. All right, and this is known as Dalton's law. All right, so you can add a D to our gas law alphabet. <laughs> All right, Avogadro, Boyle's uh, law, Charles' law, and now Dalton's law. And also, um, this uh, equation for the mole fraction, you should know. Uh, how to calculate the mole fraction. It's just the moles of one component out of the total number of moles, which is just the sum of all the different moles of each different gas. If there's more gases, you would add more in there as well. Okay. And then lastly, the uh, end result, the mole fraction times the total pressure equals the partial pressure.